This is the plaintiff, Michael Turner. He says he put down a deposit on a car at the defendant's dealership, and he's come to find out she runs one shady company. The defendant promised him a hundred times to refund the thousand bucks he gave her, but hasn't. And he's here suing her for just that today, and $1,500 in pain and suffering for a grand total of $2,500. This is the defendant, Linda. She says the plaintiff had to wait for his employer to verify his employment on the credit application. And when that happened, he asked for his deposit back. She put a lot of time and energy with the plaintiff trying to get him into a car. She doesn't work for free and she's sorry. She's keeping his money. She's accused of taking a customer for a ride. All parties, please hit your right hands. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case on the docket, the plaintiff put a deposit down in the car and says the defendant is just plain shady and won't give his deposit back. But the defendant says she did a lot of work, so the deposit's hers. It's the case of how's this for a car problem? Thank you, Douglas. You're Michael welcome. Turner. Yes. You are suing Linda. You've asked us not to mention your last name or your company name. You're, uh, you're suing her car company? Are you the owner? Yes. Okay. For $2,500, a thousand of it a deposit that she refuses to return, and the rest of it for pain and suffering. What mm-hmm. happened? Um, in March 3rd, I was shopping for a car. I stopped in the grocery store, and I saw one of those free auto magazines. And I saw something in there. It was an SUV. And I said, perfect, $3,300, $300 down. So I called. And how soon can you come down? I said, Monday morning, fine. The car will be serviced. And you can come near. Don't, don't you, before you got all excited, don't you want to see it? See yes. It's a piece so of junk? I, I went test drive it, all that stuff. Again? I, I went down there uh, Monday morning um, on the bus. It took me an hour to get there, but I got there. I was so excited. I walked in. Here's my paperwork, and the first thing out of their mouth was, um, "You have the money." I said, "Yes, but where's the car? I like to see it, test drive it." Oh, um, here, hold on, let us make copies of this. Um, you have the check? I said, well, where's the SUV? Okay. They sold it over the weekend. Okay. So it was a bait and switch. They got me there, they, all they wanted is the money. They said, hold on a second, we have other vehicles. Look out back, you'll find something you might like. Okay, so you go out back and you end up finding a car you like and you agree to put $1,000 down? Yes. Uh, okay. I didn't and the car was a total of how much? Uh, online and on the ad was 5500 Okay. They said, oh, but we have to charge you 5900 if you want us to finance it. Okay. So, so what happens? I, so I said, well, I, ha- I don't have that type of money on me. Um, give me a couple, uh, one or two weeks. Let me gather up the money, borrow and did from you? friends, which I did. And then you brought them $1,000? Certified check from my credit union. Okay. And then what happens? What uh, day do you give them the certified check? On March... The 14th. Okay, is that accurate, ma'am? Yes, it is. Okay, and, and then the do you rec- sign I the paperwork the for the car on March the 14th? N- no, the paperwork for the car, they on well, the contract was all digital. You don't have them come in and sign something? Absolutely, I do. Okay, so what, <laughs> what day did he sign paperwork? He signed paperwork on March 14th at okay, 6 47 p.m. All right, so then what happens? He doesn't get the car yet because. Well, um, I explained to him when he came in, most of my customers are credit challenged. And so I have a process. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to be polite. Right. Um, and so I have a process and I explain this to everybody. You don't walk out of here today with a vehicle. You need to provide me a list or all kinds of paperwork for the bank. The bank has to verify um, that they really do have the job that they say they have, that okay. they live where they say they live, that their insurance is active. And I actually give them a list of all the documents that they need Okay. To, so by March 14th, do you have all the documents? He brings me the documents. Okay. They're all good, and he does bring me a deposit. Okay. So did the bank ever verify him? They did. Within less than 24 hours later, they had okay. already verified. So then with, what happened? You tell him good news. So he, you've been well, verified. Well, he called me and before it was verified and said, I-, I can't do this. It's taken too long, and my company's never going to verify in time. Okay. I- I'm too nervous about it. Uh, okay. So five Verify minutes, in time? And time for what? I don't understand. I don't know. All right. So he calls you and he tells you that, and then what happens? That was at like four o'clock, and at four ten. On what day? 
on the 15th, the following day. Okay, and what time did they hours. verify him? Um, they verified him at 425. And so do you call him and tell him you've been verified? I did. Good and he news. said, I, I can't do it, I can't do it, I'm, I'm done, I want my money back. Why did you say you can't do it? I never got that phone call. So if you have a deal and it doesn't say whether it's a refundable deposit or not, which is it, refundable or non-refundable? Oh, um, that would be refundable. Why do you say? There's actually an answer to this. There's really a good answer. What do you say? I would say that it's refundable if there was something in the contract. Okay, but it's not in the contract. What do you say? Non-refundable. Not in the contract, non-refundable. Okay, okay, going inside the courtroom. What was it that happened instead? It's the 14th of March, they have to verify it, and according to you, what happens after the 14th of March? Uh, the bank called me, the financial institution, do you have possession of the car? I said, no. They said, why not? I said, well, because the dealership informed me that she's waiting for her commission piece first, then she released the car to me. So they said, well, this is not how we do things here. Okay, but I don't care about that. I, I yes. think you think I'm supposed to care about that. I want to understand why you didn't just take the car the next day. She never turned the car over to me. I never had possession. She never that, called okay, me. Okay, but why didn't you take possession the next day when you were verified the next day? I was never notified. I was even verified. Okay, I've been so calling. Now, now work with me here. Okay. So according to you, now it's March 15th. What happened yes. according to you on March 15th? Nothing. When does something happen? Because at I, some I point you asked for your money back. When did that happen? I called down there and I asked, am I getting a car today or not? What day was that that you did that? Oh, I have it all on text. I'm sorry. Why would you be entitled to get your deposit back? Why didn't you just pick up the car? When, when I called, I just never got the impression the car was ready to pick up. Um, when the bank called me, um, the car is still in her possession, and she right. said she okay, wouldn't but release I, it. What I'm trying to get from you on the 16th, show me proof that he was verified on the 16th. Um, I have the notes from the bank letting me know that verified on the 15th at 420 15th? The next oh, yeah, day. that's right. 15th. Less than 24 15th hours. 15th is what we had said. It was like 15th. 20th. Customer stated he doesn't want to proceed with the deal. <coughs> the vehicle has vehicle issues. Which it did not. It did. I subsequently sold what, it. What was the problem with the vehicle? Uh, when I went test drive the car with a, another guy claimed he worked there as a mechanic, the brake pedal and the brakes went to the floor. Wait, so when did you test drive the car? Before or after you decided to buy it? Before I, before I gave, gave him the, the money. Check. So then why did you give him the money if there was a problem with well, the car? He said he will f uh, repair all that before I pick up the car. And I said, great. Okay, so what I see happening on March 16th isn't that nobody would release the car to you. It's that you are saying to the bank, I don't want it, I don't, well, the car has issues, I don't want to proceed with the deal. That's what I see. And you're saying, yeah, 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 the car had issues. Now, at some point, my understanding is you tell him he's going to get his money back. I do have a policy that I brought here. Under certain circumstances, I will issue part of it back. But it says right on here, once we've submitted to the bank, the contract... No, why did you tell him you'd give him his money back? I told him I would give him a partial. Why, though? You never call back. Where's my money, please? That's on March 24th. You say you're all set. I put it through this morning, and that is on March 24th. It is. Had you put it through that morning? I put it through. I tried to do it electronically. There was a glitch. It didn't go into his account. I don't know why. And I called him back, and I said, look, Michael, at the end of the day... You know, I, I don't owe you this refund, but, you know, I'm, I'm trying to work with you here. This guy put me through the ringer. I worked my butt off for him. I can't talk just this second. I'll call you back as soon as I can at 9.53. At 9.54, he says, I need to come down there and pick up a hard copy of the check today. I can't wait. I borrowed half that money from my father as a favor. Then at 3.41, it's I'm in a doctor's appointment. At 3.41, I have already processed your refund again. That was the day that if I did it If it isn't in your account by tomorrow, let me know. What bank did it come from? Boy, you wasted a lot of his time for not coming through with your promise. What bank did it come from? My bank thinks it might have been an error. Capital bank card. Is that the name of the bank? I can come down there tomorrow, just pick up the cash or a check and be done. I finally got a hold of your bank without an account number, blah, blah, blah. And then you tell them today would be the second business day if it's not in your account. Then why are you doing all that? March 29th. I've been waiting for your call back. When am I going to get my money back? I mean, normally, 
I don't enforce in court a promise to pay someone. And then if you change your mind, well, then all rule bets are off and I have to rule. And this truly, when you make a deposit, it's a non-refundable deposit. I get that. But you got the guy jumping through all these hoops, telling him all this time for a good solid number of weeks that you're going to return the money. He's checking his bank. He's calling his bank. He's calling you. He keeps having to chase you. I mean, it's such a terrible way to do business. Why is that happening? And then he has to sue you to do what you swore you had already done. I tried it once, and then I got frustrated with him. He was really, quite frankly, annoying. And <laughs> I, I got tired of dealing with him. OK. <laughs> I'm just. Well, I'm going to make you pay back the $1,000. You're not going to, obviously not going to have to pay $1,000 of pain and suffering. And you're very lucky to get these $1,000 back because typically they're non-refundable. The only reason why I'm going to allow this to happen is because there was almost a solid month of you going back and forth based on her promise to pay it. And I consider that something in return for the promise to pay. When you have to check your bank, check your bank again, call her, get there. That's, you know, you shouldn't be going through all those hoops. If that's what she says she's going to do and that's what she said she did. I feel like you put enough effort into that, that that alone is reason to make her go through with her promise. <laughs> $1,000 verdict for the plaintiff. Well, finally, the plaintiff is going to get his deposit back. You know something? After hearing all this testimony, I don't blame him for suing you. My <laughs> goodness. How do you feel? You said it in there. You just gave up on him. You didn't I, want to hear it from him anymore. I was frustrated with him. You were, yeah. Mm -hmm. and look what happened. You come to court, then you lose. You could have saved a trip to court. Sorry about that. That's the way the cookie crumbles, okay. as they say, okay? Well, Mr. Turner, yes. good for you for keep, yes. keeping after. You feel better now. I feel better now. I'm glad it's over. <laughs> um, you could have had the car, though, apparently. But this was my first time trying to buy a car on my own. Yeah. So I learned a, val a valuable lesson. Yeah, you sure did. Well, what, did you ever get a car? Or are you still no, looking? I'm still looking. Still looking. Okay. <laughs> well, you won't look with her anymore, will you? <laughs> Correct. I'm sure. Thank you very much. Yep, thank you. <laughs> okay. Harvey? Okay. You know, Doug, when I said that there's actually a legal term for this, that the term is actually, it's that the law abhors forfeitures, which means that the law favors giving people back their deposits unless it specifically says non-refundable. So if it's silent, generally the presumption is that it is refundable. And that will do it for this case. Litigants for the next case on the way into the courtroom right now.